What's up guys, Rogue9 here. I've had a good number of requests asking me to weigh in on the topic of perspective in Rainbow Six Siege and I recently spent some time with Zeronic exploring the issue in Siege as well as other games, specifically CSGO and Insurgency Sandstorm and in this video I want to highlight some of the actionable tips that may be useful to you when playing Siege in terms of choosing your position or character stance. So let's jump right in. Now of course there have been quite a number of videos made recently discussing perspective and I don't really want to spend too much time covering those points again in detail but I will briefly highlight the two main facts as a brief reminder. If you've been following the discussion you will know that at the beginning of Operation Burnt Horizon the developers changed how the first person camera behaves when leaning in Rainbow Six. Before the patch the camera used to shift all the way over to the side of the head when leaning and after the patch it has been fixed to the center of the head between the eyes no matter if you're leaning or standing up straight. This seems like a significant change and I also fully believe that it must have had an impact on the game. The other important fact that has been discussed on other channels is that when it comes to perspective it is important how close or far you and your opponent are away from cover. If the first person camera were represented by a single pixel this would not matter at all since no matter how far each camera is away from the cover they will see each other at exactly the same time. The issue of one person being able to see and shoot the other while not being seen themselves arises because the third person character models extend out to the sides quite a bit and become visible before the camera itself. So the simple conclusion is that whenever you're playing a first person game, the player who is closer to cover will always be at a disadvantage, sometimes to such a degree that they can be taken out without ever seeing their opponent. For third person games where the camera floats above and behind the character the opposite is the case since you can get a huge advantage by seeing around corners without exposing yourself at all but that's a different topic altogether. Those are the facts that are important to my exploration of this topic. Being as far away from cover as possible is an advantage when peeking and the camera position has changed somewhat recently. This video is sponsored by Drop, the company formerly known as MassDrop and their product the Zennheiser PC37X. I've owned this headset now for quite a while, several months in fact, and I'm still more than happy to recommend it. Sennheiser is of course known as a company that makes great quality speakers and great quality speakers translate into great quality audio. Very light and comfortable to wear even over longer time, I think this headset is a great solution for anyone looking for a headphone and mic combo, but don't just take my word for it. The item currently has 821 reviews on the Drop website with a great customer rating of over 4.5 out of 5 stars. So if you're in the market for a new headset I can definitely recommend the PC37X and if you use the link in the description below you will get a $20 discount automatically applied to your purchase on checkout. Many thanks to Drop for supporting the channel. As I mentioned, Zeronic and I tested the principle of perspective and view quite extensively and the same phenomenon exists in every other first person shooter as well as in Siege. In Rainbow Six we may have been shielded from this phenomenon a little by the way leaning used to work or maybe in the past perspective related deaths were assumed to be netcode problems instead. I think it's also worth thinking about why we were noticing the problem more in Siege than maybe in other games. The instant headshot death, easy to control guns and the fast time to kill overall are probably important factors to consider. In games where you die a little slower, be that because of a larger health pool, less lethal headshots or harder to control recoil, you may face the exact same issue of being shot at by an unsighted opponent but at least in those situations you may still have some time to react and either get further into cover or attempt to peek out more in order to return fire. And another factor that is worth considering is also the reasonably high quality kill cam we get in Siege compared to other games. Dying to an unseen enemy and then getting to see a clip of how much of us that guy was able to see and how easy it was for him to kill us may make us feel even more cheated than if we'd not been shown the clip. Am I arguing for the kill cam to be removed? No, absolutely not. I think the kill cam is a valuable tool in helping players learn from their mistakes and also in helping to identify cheaters and suspicious players and I think more games should aim to have a robust replay system in place. 
Nevertheless, I do also think that it is possible for the replay to add frustration in some situations and maybe that is just one more factor that makes perspective related deaths jump out at us more in Siege than they do in other first person games. Whatever the explanation as to why perspective related deaths have become more noticeable in Siege lately, there are still some factors that you should take into consideration when choosing your positioning and stances while playing Rainbow Six. Let's take a closer look at those. Back when the camera position was changed, the image that the developers shared in their blog post about the leaning change gives us a relatively good idea of where the first person camera is mounted onto the character model. Center of the head just above the eyes. I ran a few tests and confirming the horizontal camera placement was really easy. It is always the center of the head. When looking straight ahead, a simple test of shooting at a wall at close range also revealed the vertical positioning of the camera and it is exactly where I expected it, just above the eyes. Now one of the questions I set out to answer in this video is, how do various stances and leaning affect how likely you are to be spotted first by your opponent? To answer this question, let's first explore what leaning actually means in terms of a first and third person perspective because this will already throw up a few little dangers to be aware of. From the first person perspective, leaning is pretty simple. The camera just shifts to the side by a few inches while staying perfectly vertically aligned and without turning the view left or right at all. What this means is that you essentially end up with a perfectly parallel line of sight to the one you had before and this means that your bullet impacts will always be spaced exactly the same distance apart no matter how far away from your target you are. This only works though when you are aiming straight ahead. When aiming up or down, the lean is no longer perfectly in line and your aim will either pivot up when aiming up or pivot down when aiming down. The third person character movement when leaning has been modeled in such a way that the camera position above and between the eyes shifts pretty much in line with the movement of the first person camera, although the character model does straighten up and become maybe an inch or so taller and the head also tilts a little bit. And this is where we run into our first little danger. When you lean and you're aiming down your sights, your camera position moves perfectly horizontally, but your character becomes a little bit taller and in certain situations, this can make you a slightly easier target without you gaining any advantage. The reason for this is that aiming makes your character hunch down a little, but leaning cancels out this benefit. When peeking over solid cover, leaning will make your head stick out just that little bit more while not providing you with a better view in any way. Sure, you can argue that the difference is only a couple of centimeters, but in a game where headshots mean instant death, this could make all the difference. So my advice would be to use caution when leaning behind cover and only lean if you actually have a valid reason to do so. This does not apply though when fighting from an elevated position. If you are above your opponent, fighting over a balcony, through a hatch or maybe a floor breach, leaning will actually make your character appear slightly shorter and will increase the advantage you have over your opponent. But apart from the minor disadvantage of leaning behind hip-high cover, leaning can have significant advantages and the fact is that the closer to cover you are, the more you will get out of leaning. Because what leaning will also do, in terms of your character model, is to shift the head and also the camera further towards the side while keeping your body and legs where they are. When you lean to the left, your third person character model will even switch to a left handed grip on their firearm and this is really useful in terms of minimizing how much of their body and legs will be visible from behind cover. As you can see in the footage of one of my tests, leaning, even after the removal of the camera shift to the side of the head, goes quite a long way towards helping mitigate the risks of fighting around close cover when your opponent is further away. There is still a possibility of being seen first, but you are presenting a much smaller target. So the closer you are to cover, the more important it becomes to lean and to lean in the right direction. Leaning the wrong way will basically present everything but a small part of your head to the enemy and as several studies have shown, this is a bad thing to do. When kneeling and leaning close to cover, the results are pretty much exactly the same. Leaning the correct way will always expose less of your body and head. 
The prone position is a little more complex though, especially since we have to differentiate between lying face forward or backward. When prone, instead of bringing the head further over to one side, leaning will shift your entire body around. This means that when your feet are facing backwards, you will have to expose your arm and head around a corner before you can see your opponent further away. When not leaning though, your operator exposes more of their legs and body but at the same time exposing less of their head. Sure, with the low time to kill in Siege it is definitely going to get you killed but interestingly your head is safer in this position. Leading the wrong way still is a really bad idea though because you have to almost fully expose yourself before you get to see anything of your opponent. What is the difference when lying feet forward? Well, see for yourself. As with all of the other images, I have moved Rook out to a position where he just can't see me and while I can see his arm, because I'm still in the much more powerful position at long range from cover, I can see almost nothing of his head. Not leaning with Rook fully exposes one leg but still the head is more in cover than when lying face forward. Leaning the wrong way? Yeah, still terrible. So my conclusion here would be that, if at all possible, it is worth making sure that you back up against cover and force your operator to turn around when holding a prone angle. You will still potentially suffer if you are in a disadvantageous position but at least your head is reasonably safe. When you are in the stronger position that is further away from cover, the perspective shift of leaning will only provide you with a minimal benefit but nevertheless it is still good practice to lean because of the change in stance of your third person character model and this is particularly true when you are prone. The change in angle of your body when leaning will make a significant difference in terms of how early you expose yourself. In the test you can see on screen now, I always arrange the two characters in such a way that their forehead cameras can only just see each other and as you can see leaning the correct way will make a significant difference in terms of the amount of your body and legs that will be exposed to your opponent. So those are the general considerations of perspective and leaning in Siege but I have two more topics here that could have an impact on your engagements. At the beginning of the video I talked about the dangers of leaning when fighting from an elevated position and there is another factor to be aware of when fighting at different heights. What you need to be aware of here is again the camera position which right now is just above the eyes at the front of the head and it's the last detail that is important. In the past the camera position used to be further back inside of the head of your character but now that it is right at the front it can make fighting from a lower position extremely dangerous even if your opponent above you is technically closer to the cover that is separating the two of you. This is because as either you or the enemy move out of cover, the first thing that will become exposed for the lower player is the top of the head starting from the back. This means that the elevated player has a very good chance of killing the lower one via a headshot before the lower player ever has a chance to fight back. When fighting through a hatch or a doorway from elevation, the advantage again lies with the top player since they will be able to see the opponent's feet and body long before the lower player has a chance to get a decent view. This definite advantage for the top player has its limitations though. Once the distance between the two players increases, the earlier principle of the closer to cover you are the greater the disadvantage comes into play more. As you can see, once the lower player moves far enough away, they will actually start to take the advantage to a point where they could get a kill onto the other player without being seen. And finally there is one last quirk in Siege that could end up costing you a gunfight when you are holding certain angles and the problem appears to be an ant infestation at Rainbow HQ. When standing still every operator in Siege cycles through a continuous movement animation that is undoubtedly caused by ants that are crawling down the character's back at all times. The movement may be subtle but they do present an issue in that your third person model and hitbox will shift around ever so slightly while your first person view stays exactly the same. 
When we run a test with two players on the same team, you can see that it's not just the model but also the hitbox that can become just that little bit more exposed when you allow your character to bobble about like this. And something that adds to the issue is that it's not even consistent. Standing straight up and leaning right will allow your character to bob around, but when you lean left, the animation stops and your operator suddenly becomes focused and disciplined for no reason whatsoever. When kneeling, the animation becomes simplified and shorter and it becomes consistent no matter which way you lean. It does still involve swaying left and right, but maybe not quite to the same degree as when standing. When prone, a similarly simple and consistent movement cycle is used, but with a little look out to the side thrown in at the end. Now of course, the movement is very subtle and chances are that you may never die to an opponent that happened to be just in the right place to catch your character jiggling out of cover, but even a minor desync in what your third person model and first person perspective are doing is a risk factor. My conclusion would be that the animation is most dangerous when standing up and leaning to the right, and as minor as the issue may be, there is something that you can do to eliminate it altogether. Aiming down sights will immediately stop your operator from swaying around so much, and so if you are in the situation where your character might inadvertently stick part of their head out of cover, aiming will help you to reduce that risk to zero. And that is it, my take on the question of perspective in Rainbow Six and a few small practical tips that you can hopefully use to try to avoid falling victim to unseen enemies. Do lean to the correct side, especially when you are close to cover, but don't lean unnecessarily when aiming and peeking over the top of cover. If you are fighting from an elevated position though, leaning will be beneficial to you. When holding an angle, you are just that little bit safer if you aim down sights since it removes the random character movement and if you are prone, you are better off face back than face forward. Do let me know what you think about the topic in the comment section below and with that, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.